Hey guys, welcome to the study of Ruth. If you're new to our YouTube channel, we are um, thankful. We're so grateful that you've joined us here, that maybe you've just stumbled across um, our page. We are uh, glad that you came and we hope that you will follow us um, as we go through different books of the Bible studying together. We came um, to this um, place of creating a YouTube channel because we actually uh, lead a online Bible study through Facebook and the name of our study group is Lift and that's um, Living in Faith Together. And we come together there and uh, we are just now starting Zoom meetings, things like that, but we've been studying the Bible uh, together and we just kind of follow the Lord's leading as he leads us to which book is going to be next. Last summer we actually read a different book, an inspirational book. We, we read that together. But it's what I do. I come on here and I pre-record the lessons for the books that we're studying. And then we take the video and we post it on Facebook for our private Lift Bible Study group. So again, if you're new to this channel, if you would like to be a part of the online Bible study that we do. We would love to have you, and it's um, it's Lift, and um, it has a hyphen between each letter, L hyphen I hyphen F hyphen and T, so we would love to have you there, but for those of you who are regulars and are excited about the study of Ruth, I too am so excited, and I had not really planned on this, but it this book just kind of fell in my lap, so I knew that it was a God thing, and I have read Ruth just like you have. We know the story, but some of us have not studied this inductively, and so um, I just really followed the Lord's leading on this, and I'm so glad that I did. I've learned so much. Now, for those of you who are on our Lyft uh, Facebook page, um, if you did not participate in our Zoom meeting the other night, what's going to happen is we will post this particular video, which is going to consist of chapters 1 and 2, and we will post that on February the 2nd, 2021. And then uh, Vicki will post four separate videos um, that I talked about in our Zoom meeting the other night, and that's for you to watch in addition to this lesson if you want to. Um, I would highly recommend that you do that. It's so wonderful. It was just, it was just God that I stumbled up on this um, series on Ruth, and this series was recorded over in Israel, and um, it just puts you right in this story. It is beautiful. And there are places that you can fast forward, but the segments are not very long at all. So I would highly recommend if you're part of our Lift group that you would watch every one of those. You're going to love it. And then we're going to come together on the 4th, I believe, on Thursday via Zoom. And we're going to talk about what you have learned in your chapter. I'm going to learn from you. I want you all to teach me what you have learned in chapters one and two. So um, we have a lot to cover and I have my notes here. And so I'm going to kind of stick with those once we get started so that I can not take up so much time. And I will not be reading chapters one and two. Now listen, if you haven't already read chapters one and two of Ruth, I would recommend that you pause this, that you do your own personal study of Ruth for those of you who study inductively, uh, go ahead and mark your passages, uh, make your notes, do um, find your keywords, those things that we do when we study that way. Do all of that before you listen to this because God, uh, through the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, if you are His, is going to teach you and lead you into, into things that I will not discuss because it's not for me. But I'm anxious to hear from you what he has shared with you. So, um, and we can do that on Zoom. So, um, let's pray and we'll get started on Ruth chapter 1. And of course, if you have the new uh, inductive study Bible, which if you don't, I highly recommend. Um, I'm going to read a couple of things from the very beginning of the book. Just a few things that I've highlighted that I wanted to um Put out there in case someone is new and they don't have this particular Bible. So anyway, let's pray and we'll get started. 
Father, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to read and study your word together. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the Holy Spirit to dwell within us, to teach us all things, all truth, and that you use your word to change us. And um, God, I just want to share um, in, in a way that will help others to grow and to see you and to point others to you. So I pray that you would guard my heart and my mouth and my lips, Lord. I just pray that you would have your way. I'm just your voice today um, as we record this. And I just pray that you would bless those that are listening, that you would meet their needs. And God, that we would meet your needs, the desires that you have for us, that you would give us a desire for more of you and to walk and live in righteousness and in holiness and in purity. And God, that you would give us uh, the characteristics that we're learning about in this beautiful book of Ruth. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I want to start with reading a couple of things from you uh, for uh, you from my New Inductive Study Bible. And I'm using the New American Standard translation. Uh, you use the translation of your choice if you are new to this um, site. I just wanted to mention that. You use your own personal preference. We don't, um, we don't, uh, we're not strict about what translation you use, okay? So you just do you. But I did a little bit of background, not much, but a little bit of background on the um, book of Ruth, and I'm quoting that it is traditionally ascribed to the prophet Samuel, but Ruth's identity as a non-Israelite and the stress on the need for an inclusive attitude towards foreigners suggest an origin in the 5th century B.C. when intermarriage had become controversial as seen in Ezra chapter 9 verse 1 and the book of Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 1. Now, in the introduction of the book of Ruth, if you have this Bible, you can look on page 439, and you'll see that this book offers encouragement, and we all need that, and hope to those who decide to follow God. This story of love, and isn't it just wonderful that we are in the month of February doing a love story, and it's Valentine's Day, and I just thought that was so neat, and that's just God's way of perfect timing, but this story of love and dedication revolves around three people who determine in their hearts to walk in integrity, clinging to their God and his precepts, something we all need to do. Three people who know who their king is and who do what is right in his eyes. Then if you'll go down to the bottom of that page, she's giving us some things to think about. And here are the things, and I won't read all of them, but I'm just going to read some highlight about that. Things to think about while you're studying the book of Ruth. What have you learned about loyalty from the story of Ruth? Write those down in your notebook. Write those down in the margins of your Bible. What does it mean to be loyal to God, to his people, to his precepts, and to trust God to do what he says he will do? Number two is you think of Boaz redeeming Ruth. Remember that you have a kinsman redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Think of how the Lord has acted on your behalf as your kinsman redeemer by becoming a man so he could break death's hold by paying for your sins. That's found in Hebrews 2, chapter, chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. Remember that you were not redeemed from your empty way of life with silver or gold, but with the precious blood of the Lamb of God, a lamb without spot or blemish, 1 Peter 1, verses 18 through 19. And then she says, goes on to say that Rahab and Ruth, both of these women, chose to believe God when, they're, when those around them didn't. Consider how their example might apply to your life. And then on page 440, they, she closes with one Gentile woman turns from idols to serve the only true God in which category do you find yourself? So those are some things to think about, 
things to remember, and it might be a good idea to write those things down that we just mentioned in the front of your notebook of Ruth, so that as you're reading through Ruth, you can revisit those and really think and ponder on those points that we just read. Now, so you've already read chapters one and two, and so I'm just going to kind of sit here and go through my notes, share with you what God has given me, and then I look forward, again, like I said earlier, hearing from you and what God has taught you so that you can teach me. So we're in Ruth chapter one, and we see that um, we're, we've been introduced to Elimelech, which is Naomi's husband. Now, Elimelech, he's an Israelite, and from my research, I found that his name means, my God is king. And so um, then Naomi, Elimelech's wife, her name means pleasant, and then Milan, his name means sick. And that'll make sense after a while if you haven't already read this. And then Kilion um, is, uh, Milan and Kilion are their sons, and his name means pining. And th this is a family of Bethlehem and Judah. And so due to a famine that's governed by the judges, the family went to the land of Moab, as you've read. So let me tell you a little bit about Moab. It's the name of an ancient kingdom whose territory is today located in the modern state of Jordan. The land is mountainous and lies alongside much of the eastern shore of the Dead Sea. According to the Hebrew Bible, Moab was often in conflict with its Israelite neighbors to the west. So, you read where uh, the family remained in the land of Moab. Um, then uh, Elimelech died, so Naomi's now a widow, and um, Naomi was left with her two sons. Now, the two sons took for themselves Moabite women as wives. One was Orpah, uh, which her name means Main, M-A-N-E, a Moabitess. The other was Ruth, also a Moabitess, and her name means friend. And you'll understand this later if you don't already, if you haven't already read it. And they lived in uh, the land of Moab for about 10 years. So both Milan and Kilian died. Uh, Naomi bereft, meaning deprived or of or lacking something um, of a person. She's sad and lonely, um, uh, and it means that it you're sad and lonely through someone's death, of course, um, or their departure. And she she was bereft of her two children and her husband. So now you have. Orpah and you have Ruth, also widows, just like Naomi, their mother-in-law. So Naomi, she arose with Orpah and Ruth that she might return from the land of Moab. They departed from the place and went on the way to return to the land of Judah. Now, if you've been studying with me any time at all, you know that I'm just basically paraphrasing the chapter. Um, so I'm not taking away from scriptures. That's your responsibility to read the scriptures. And I'm just kind of like revisiting uh, these passages so that we can um, kind of hear them again. So I'm uh, paraphrasing. I'm not reading out of the Bible because uh, I've already done my homework in doing that. So Naomi, now a widow and mother without children, says to her daughters-in-law, Go, return to your mother's house. And she says, May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. May the Lord grant that you find rest. She kissed them and they all wept. They both said no. We will return with you to your people. In verses 11 and 12, Naomi repeats, return my daughters. And then in verse 13, she once again refers to them as daughters, which I thought was so, so sweet. When she says, it's harder for me, it's more bitter for me than for you. Because I mean, really I can see that because she's lost her husband and she's lost her two sons. And so now she's going to give up 
what have become like her own daughters. So I can see where she says it's, it's harder for me than for you. And um, she says, she goes on to say that the hand of the Lord has gone forth against me. And, you know, during the study, when I first began studying this, I, I felt like that. Not that I've lost my husband, not that I've lost my children, but there was just some things that I just felt like that. And I think it's, um, because, you know, anytime we're studying the Word of God, God always makes it a timely matter when we're studying a particular book in the Bible. And I, I think that most of you would relate and would agree with that. And it just so happened that while I was studying this, you know, my first thoughts were, I currently feel like this, that the hand of the Lord has fallen against me. And I have felt like this many times, not all the time in my journey with the Lord, uh, but not, again, for the same reasons uh, but I can understand just by looking at her and her humanness why she would feel this way. And we know, for those of us who are reading the Bible uh, through the year chronologically, we're just now coming out of, well, by now when you see this video, we will have finished the book of Job. But we certainly know that Job could relate to this. Again, this is so timely as a cross-reference when I was reading this, um, where Job could relate in chapter 19 verse 21 the psalmist could relate in psalm 32 verse 4 write those verses down go look those up if you haven't already and we can all relate to feeling like this due to different circumstances that god has allowed to be in our lives and so we're still in chapter 1 and in verse 14 same as in verse 9 they lifted up their voices and they wept again. And so Orpah, she kissed Naomi. Ruth, again, her name meaning friend, clung to Naomi. And Naomi pointed to Ruth that Orpah went back to her people and her gods. She said, return um, after your sister-in-law. And Ruth said, where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I'll lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God. Where you die, I'll die. Thus may the Lord do to me, and worse, this is Ruth speaking, if anything but death parts you and me. And in my notes, I put such loyalty, such commitment, and complete determination that she was not going to leave. Naomi, her mother-in-law. And that says a lot because she's not from there. She doesn't, she wasn't raised like they were raised. And I just thought, how committed are we to one another and to be that loyal and committed? So when Naomi saw Ruth's determination, she said no more to her about her leaving, returning home. So they both went to Bethlehem, as you read. And you know that Bethlehem means house of bread. It's a place in Palestine. And the city was stirred because of them when they returned from the land of Moab. The women said when they came into the town, Naomi, is this, is this Naomi? And another place in the New Testament, the city was stirred. In Matthew 21, 10, when Jesus entered Jerusalem and the people asked, who is this? So Naomi tells them, do not call me Naomi, which means what? Pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter. And tells why. She tells why. The Almighty has dealt with very bitterly with me. So note the contrast between the names of Naomi. She, uh, we know that she's defined as pleasant. And now she is calling herself bitter because she feels that God has dealt very seriously with her by taking first her husband and then her two children and then her willingness to give up both of her daughter-in-law's. And again, I wrote down at the time that I was studying this that I currently feel this way, but not for the same reason, like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, such as the death of my husband and or children. 
Um, but this story being the perfect timing, because God's just like that, uh, certainly puts things in perspective um, in the way that I was feeling. And there are times I, I feel certain that all of us um, go through times of feeling so pleasant and then so bitter because we're hurt and we don't understand and we're wandering and wandering. Um, and so it's, it's the humanness in us. And I, I appreciate the fact that that's mentioned in the book of Ruth because it's relatable. We can relate to her. Uh, excuse me, Naomi. We can relate to her. So Naomi goes on to explain, I went out, meaning she, she left Bethlehem with her family. She said, I went out full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. It's another contrast between pleasant and bitter and being full and empty. And sometimes um, even, you know, when I started studying this as well, I, I feel very, um, I just felt very empty spiritually. It's been a really hard time. And I've spoken to some of you in our group and who've said the same thing, that spiritually you just feel like you're dry and in a desert and you feel empty of God's presence, although we know by his word that he never leaves us or forsakes us. So we cannot go by feelings. We have to go by facts that we read so that builds our faith to believe far beyond what we ever feel. And so um, I have felt full of his spirit and uh, just not currently. And so, um, and that's okay. And that's another way we can relate to Naomi. But she went on to say, Naomi went on to say that the Lord has witnessed against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. And you know what? We can all say that as well. We can all say that we have felt that way and it's okay. It's okay. God knows how we feel. God knows what we're thinking. We may as just say it. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm praying, I'm just like talking to him, like I'm talking to you, Lord, I just don't understand this and I'm not happy about this. I voice my opinion, but I do it respectfully because I know he's God and I have that respect for him. So, um, I, I do love how the chapter ends. Uh, Naomi returned with her Ruth, her daughter-in-law who returned from, from Moab and came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley, which is the plant, the grain. Uh, it was at the beginning of the harvest. So we're told who, we're told where, and we're told when. And so um, that kind of summarizes chapter one. And we're going to jump right into chapter two. And then... Um, so we find in chapter two, we're introduced to Boaz, who is Elimelech. He's a kin to Elimelech, Naomi's uh, late husband. And Boaz is a man of great wealth from Bethlehem. And so the key words in this chapter for me were the words glean, which means to gather. And it may, um, the other two key words that I wrote down were um, the word after and the word favor. I love that word. So Ruth asks permission, which I think is so respectful. I love that, and I'm so glad they put that in there. But Ruth asks permission from Naomi to go to the field and glean, go there to gather, which Naomi grants Ruth that permission um, I, I'm not sure why Ruth asked, um, but I will point out that she did ask. She did receive permission, and I want to point out that Ruth worked, and we'll see that. Um, and you, you've already, you already know that if you've read this chapter. But like in verse 5, um, we see that Boaz had inquired of his servant, Whose young woman is this? The servant replies, she is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. I find that interesting, the young. So in verse 7, Ruth is uh, waiting to glean after the reapers among the sheaves from morning, sitting in the house for a little while. And in verse 8, Boaz approaches Ruth and he tells her three things. And I hope that you numbered these in um, in your Bible, the first thing he says, do not go 
to glean in another field. Do not go to glean in another field. Do not go from this one. Third thing, stay here with my maids. So my thought is, you know, Ruth's not from there. She's never met Boaz, yet she ends up in his field and gains his favor, which to me equals God's leading in order to fulfill his plan and his purpose as we see later in this book. Now, in verse 9, um, we have Boaz granting her permission who also commanded his servants not to touch her and um, to drink when thirsty. He, he's telling uh, Ruth this um, and to tell her, he's telling her to drink from the water jars that the servants draw. So Ruth is so humbled and I, I think that's a beautiful characteristic as well, being humble and um, being so respectful, you know, to Naomi and being so committed and dedicated and loyal at all of those things that we can learn from, that we can, uh, we should adapt into our own walk with the Lord and pray that God would give us those same characteristics. So in verse 10, we find that Ruth falls on her face, bowing to the ground and asking, Why have I found favor in your sight since I am a foreigner? So in verse 11, we see that Boaz replies, All you have done for Naomi after the death of your husband, how you left your parents and the land of your birth. You came to a people that you didn't know. And all of that had been reported to Boaz. So Ruth's loyalty and commitment had been heard of. It certainly paid off. And there, again, is a lot to learn about her characteristics. And, you know, I put down here, very, very selfless. Ruth was so selfless. And I think that's another beautiful characteristic that um, I could learn from. I don't know about you, um, that I certainly could learn from. So we see in verse 12 that Boaz said, May the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. Isn't that beautiful? Verse 13, Ruth said three things. I have found favor in your sight. You've comforted me. You've spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I'm not like one of your maidservants. She pointed this out again like she did in verse 10 when she said, I am a foreigner. And most people point out what they're not instead of being and accepting who they are in Christ. And I'm very bad to point out my shortcomings to others. I just, I don't want anybody to think that I think that I'm anything. But I am a child of God and there are no apologies for that. But we need to be nice to ourselves and I think that we need to be careful and not throwing off on ourselves and loving ourselves because Jesus loved us and God loved us and he proved that by giving us his son as a ransom, as a kinsman redeemer for our lives. And so we are worth um, something or we would not, he would not have gone and suffered such a horrible, horrific death on our behalf. So I just want you to know that. And so I put down here in my notes that this next verse, it really makes me smile. And I read this verse repeatedly, verse 14. Boaz said to her, Ruth, come here. Literally, that means draw near. And then he says, why? He, t he tells us why. That you may eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers. And a picture to me is that now she's one of them. And he made that happen for her in front of all of them. And he, Boaz, served. 
I looked that up. He held out to her. He, the owner of the land, the field, he held out his hand to her. He served her. That is beautiful. That is just, he he was um, in charge. He had servants. And yet he gave the beautiful example of serving. We're never too big, too much, too high up to to serve. Jesus came to serve. And this is a beautiful picture of um, that through Boaz and his characteristics. I just love that. But he held out to her roasted grain and she ate and was satisfied and she had some left. That's a rare thing for me to have anything left. Look, if we're going to sit down at the table and eat, Kimmy's going to eat, you know, and I need to quit eating till it's all gone. I need to eat till I'm just satisfied. You, Some of you all can relate. But I just found it so great that he, not his servants, served her. Um, and again, what the wealthy one owned, his field, um, this field, and had servants work in his field, and he served her. I just couldn't get over that. So, um, and then I wrote this. Personal note, she ate, Ruth ate, and she was satisfied Note to self, Kim, you don't have to finish everything on your plate. Now, I was raised like that. You don't waste. And I'd say many of you were too. But a side note, um, in this part of the story, and at this point, I had not read ahead, um, it appears, and it's obvious really, that both Boaz and Ruth are both very humble. You know, verse 10, she bowed to the ground, recognizing his favor. And then in verse 14, he served her, now one of his maidservants. And um, I wonder how the others felt seeing this. Uh, seeing that she bowed before him, seeing that he served her, and they worked for him what a beautiful example. I just I just can't get over that. It's just a beautiful example of uh, humility. It's just beautiful. But we're going to verses 15 and 16. Like I could just sit there and just dwell on that and picture all of that in my mind. All of them sitting around, uh, you know, in the floor, however, on the ground or in the pit, you know, in an area where they just were eating and he just serves her. That's just beautiful. But let's go on to verse 15 and 16. Boaz commands his servants one, let, let her, Ruth, glean among the sheets, not after they were done. The second thing he says, do not insult her. The third thing he says is purposely pull out for her some grain from the bundles and leave it that she may gather, may glean. And if you all watch these videos, you're going to see these fields. Or something, a field that's similar to this, that's going to put you right there in the field uh, in, when you watch those videos that we're going to post on our page. Now, on verse 17, in verse 17, she gleaned till evening and she beat out what she gleaned. In other words, again, may I mention that she worked. And um, this is not easy work. It required a very, very strong back. And so I went and I Googled that, and you'll also see that in your uh, videos that we're going to post on our Lyft page um, of someone doing that kind of work. And you just think, you know, she's young. That was mentioned twice in that chapter. She's working. She is uh, positioning herself as a servant. She's being uh, loyal to Ruth. She ate, and then she took some that was left over. Because in verse 18, she says, Ruth took what she gleaned to Naomi and also gave her what was left over from the mealtime that she had once she was satisfied. She was very giving. She was very committed. She was very thoughtful. And that, too, is a great example to all of us. And then in verse 19, Naomi asked, where did you glean? Where did you work? May he who took notice of you be blessed Ruth told Naomi with whom she had worked and said, The name of the man with whom I work today is Boaz. Now, I want to read, um, let me see, I want to read 
verses 20 through 23 and um, to you before we end and before we close on chapter 2. So I'm reading Ruth chapter 2 verses 20 um, through 23. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed of the Lord who has not withdrawn his kindness to the living and to the dead. Again, Naomi said to her, The man is our relative. He's a redeemer. He is one of our closest relatives. Then Ruth the Moabitess said, Furthermore, he said to me, you should stay close to my servants until they have finished all my harvest. Verse 22. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his maids so that others do not fall upon you in another field. Verse 23. So she, Ruth, and I hope that you've given her her own color, so that every time you look down, you'll know if it's Naomi speaking or Ruth speaking. So she stayed close by the maids of Boaz in order to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. And she lived with her mother-in-law. Such a servant. Um, Ruth did as both Naomi and Boaz suggested. She was young, she was obedient, she was respectful, um, she was a servant, she was a hard worker, she was loyal, committed. Listen, these are all the attributes that we need to adapt. And if you're like me, you have some work to do. But I just love the beautiful picture that we've read in just the first two chapters of Ruth. This has been so good. We all just... Um, probably, you know, thought about what we learned maybe in Sunday school or, um, you know, if our parents just taught us the beautiful love story between Ruth and Boaz, but there's so much more and it's so worth taking the time to read the scriptures, to look at them carefully, to mark them, uh, to make notes so that we can apply that which we've read. I hope that you, that you have enjoyed the first two chapters of Ruth. And um, on the next Tuesday, whatever the, uh, the week is after, we're posting this one on February the 2nd. And then the next Tuesday, we will post this a lesson from chapters 3 and 4. And then we'll post the last four of those video sessions that I was talking to you about. And I hope you enjoy those. And I'm so thankful that you're here and you be blessed and just soak in all that you can from this beautiful, beautiful love story uh, from the book of Ruth. God bless you.